Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at the... Is it Orb? Where's Orb? I think it's Orb. Retro Mini TV handheld console. Yeah, my friends, I found another one. And the reason why I'm seeing another one, in the, my previous video, we talked about mini televisions, more like these retro game systems that you can just display or play. And I came across this thing second hand and didn't buy it new. So, sorry guys, it's no package from China today. ABS orb yourself in the world of gaming and gadgets and yeah, I am familiar with this brand I read that did a review about this product and and just to be honest I was not very pleased with it and I think I also did this one but don't know for sure because sometimes there are different manufacturers making these products and just an explanation different languages how the product needs to be functioning Oh boy, let's see. We're going to get this is the stand where the television is going to be positioned on. Uh, oh, ran. We're going to get a lot of small batteries. Let's pop it out. That's the only thing that I need to do. Here we're going to get an AV out cable because we can use this thing like a game system to wireless controllers. So I must say that it is a quite interesting concept. And they look kind of cute. So let's take a close look at this device. How you need to put it together. Oh, this thing goes in here. It even gets a rubber feet at the bottom. So you can put them in position. I think you need to put it in a certain position or... I think it is, otherwise it's going to be standing very strangely. Ah, here it is. Okay, so that's it. Surprise, surprise, we're going to need three AAA batteries for this bad boy. This mini television. So let's open it up. Let's put the batteries in here. I think it's going to be a freaking challenge getting the batteries in the other device. Ah. Oh yeah. What a relaxing tune. Okay, I must say that sound is really relaxing okay so let's open up so we're going to get this as the background song just want to play one play two. Oh wait there are two yeah there are two dots on here so i'm going to need this one because in this video i'm just going to play 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 by myself me myself and i i'm not very happy that they added these weird batteries i'm very glad that the seller gave me these what cells are these? I don't recall. The LR44, okay. <coughs> Do we put them like this? I guess so. <sighs> All right. Yeah, it's working, okay. And we're ready. Okay, so at the front we're going to get the knob and the knob itself is for volume control both buttons over here like the reset button and that's it my friends that's the only thing okay so i'm just going to put the controller 2 over here let's see that's how responsive this thing is uh, one player thank you so what you're going to get are a lot of weird games shark thunderman okay i wouldn't be surprised that like there are horrible knockoff games or maybe like actual good knockoff games nuggets fun fact like i'm not putting the control in front of the system i'm just holding it beneath the desk and the distance you can use these things are quite interesting very good but are all games like puzzle games with homebrew games F22, okay, so F22 is a familiar game. I've seen these on mini arcade machines. I'll boot it up to show you. It's like shoot 'em up. Pretty basic, but a lot of fun. Alright, so let's boot it up. And for this tiny controller, the D-pad is very responsive. So let's be honest guys, so this is not a product you're going to buy for playing some retro games, or I wouldn't. 
This is just like a really fun collectible to play a game like mini arcade machines. If you're having like this maybe figurine collection, it's fun to put between your statues or something like that. Okay, so there is no resetting it with the controller, so we need to go to the television and reset it. I'm pressing on the button over here. Alright. Cut fruit. Oh, interesting. Yep, I have seen all of these games before. And these are more like the 16 bit stylish games that are actually like cut through what oh yeah but don't cut the bombs yeah where did we see this before mm-hmm game called superhero how creative are you with the naming oh i play this weird game you're driving car fighting wave blasts and enemies it can't get more wickeder than this and collecting the stars. Oh, now I'm getting out of my car. I just need to push everything. Okay. And you know what is really wicked? That we're going to connect a mini television on a television. I'm just going to be honest. So, my first impression is that the video quality is not that bad for this mini television. Hmm. Let's try some games. UFO. All right, let's boot it up. And what do I do? Collect the orbs? Yeah. Okay, so I need to avoid the other weird shape items and collect the color bubbles. Interesting. But I've been looking through the list if I can find some really good knockoff. Not this Tetris version, you know, like the Tetris game, something they rip off every single multi game card or whatsoever. But I wanted to see if I can find a game that is actually like knockoff from an original one. But so far, I can see they didn't do that at all. There are a lot of games, to be honest, but they are all unique homebrew. Crappy games. Devil Doom, Diamond. Oh yeah, whatever. Let's take a close look at the inside. Okay, so let's see if we can tear it apart. There's one screw over there. I think that it's that's it. Second screw over there. Well, not a lot of screws. That's it. The only thing that we're going to need. Hmm. Okay, wait. Okay, so what I'm going to do to be extra careful. See, there are no other screws. We're going to screw the battery compartment open. I didn't see any screws over here. No, not really. Oh, I think I need to be very gentle then. Let's pull it out. Maybe it's clicked from this side. Yep, it is. Okay, so let's take a close look in the inside, my friends. So, in this part, we're going to get the speaker itself. And I must say that I am very surprised how loud this thing is. Minus a plus from the battery compartment that goes into this PCB board. And this PCB board controls the AV out. We have the input for 5 volts, so we can use an external source. And, of course, the on and off switch. And then we having the other part over here. So there's one cable going to the display itself. All right. Of course, we're going to open this up too because I want to do completely tear down of this bad boy. There are only two screws, also two screws holding this in place. And when you're going to remove this bad boy, you can see like there is an LCD that is inside of this lens. Giving more this nostalgia feeling. Ah, damn it. Ah. Ah, sorry guys, I need to cut it because I needed to have my both hands and I just want to rip and tear. I told the camera. So there's one like plastic knob on the 
control unit itself. Here we're going to get the LCD. I must say they are using a quite good LCD. And let's see whether the production date is 2018. But I'm not curious about this. They are using the MXIC. So this is a very known chip. I have seen it before, like on other devices. I think the last one I recall is the all one multi game card console and the black block for the chip, of course. They're always doing that. Okay, so this is the, I think they call it the pod meter for the button over here. And here we have the two micro switches for the reset. Kind of strange that we're having two micro switches. Okay, let's see if we have some more information over here. Model number, the R8073A. And it's more like the indication of the version. So there's not a lot to see in the inside. So we're going to put it back together. But yeah, what do I think of a device like this? I know they are selling them for quite a lot of money. And don't pay me on it, but I think it was around $50. It can be more, it can be less. But in the end, what you're going to get is more like a fun collectible. I do like it that the controllers work very well and they're not really comfortable. They are too tiny for my hands. But the display itself in this device, it's not bad at all. It's got a beautiful display. The games is a mix about 8-bit, 16-bit stylish games. So in my opinion, it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's nothing to compare to the ones I reviewed from China. The other one with the Android box, that was pretty cool. You can do a lot of great things with it. But this one has like an AVO function. So you can basically use it like a game system. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit that little bell. Become on the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.